Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Horace's India meeting 2021. We have come at the almost at the fag end of the program. This is the last parallel session of this year's Horace's India meeting. Uh, that's why we promise, since it is the last one, we, we, we promise you to uh, deliver an interesting and lively session. Uh, so you, you remember that. Uh, we have a very important and one of the most relevant topic to discuss today, uh, which is, uh, you know, very uh, contemporary so far as Indian economy is concerned. In this session, we are going to deliberate on how India's developing economy lifts local as well as export growth. Now, uh, from a very low base, India struggled to become a, a focused manufacturing economy supplying local needs as well as exporting. <clears throat> say thanks to uh, Make in India uh, initiatives taken by Government of India in 2014. As you know that the objective of this initiative is to uh, invite uh, manufacturers across the globe to make their products in India and not only for India, but also for the entire world. But we have to see uh, where we have come so far in this initiative. Now, when we're saying that, you know, uh, during this initiative, a lot of reforms has taken place. But at the same time, lot needs to be taken going forward to be, you know, have this uh, initiatives a grand success. So we need to understand that where India stand in this journey, what has changed recently? Is government reforms stimulating locals and export growth? How other countries look at India to its new strength? Or are geopolitics looking for a buttress against the other nation? All these questions need to be answered, and we will try to find the answers of all these questions. We are having an accomplished lineup of speakers today on our panel. <coughs> the panels look fantastic. Uh, right now, uh, one gentleman uh, is still not uh, uh, still not there. Hope he will be uh, you know joining us very soon. Let me introduce uh, my esteemed panelists to you now. Uh, we have uh, uh, Francesca Bruni with us, joining from Milan, Italy. She is the president of Art Valley, based in Milan. Art Valley is an organization that projects and international forums of the promotion of specific cross-cultural and geopolitical initiatives. She focuses on providing strategies for cultural and international business diplomacy for both medium and long-term B2B and B2C uh, projects. And during this time, he has traveled in the length and breadth of India. He works very closely with government of India as well as few state government. Welcome, Francesca, in this Horses India meeting 2021. Thank you. Okay. Next is Thank you for the presentation. We have Dr. Purnima Voria joining us from Denver, Colorado, US. She is the founder and CEO of National US India Chamber of Commerce. This is a recognized international organization that promotes bilateral trade and investment between US and India and also the other parts of the globe. Dr. Vora has been a national, has been an international speaker. And he speaks, you know, in various forums, including the World Economy Forum in Davos. He has been a national, she has been a national advisor to the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. And in 2005, the Wall Street Journal has awarded her as a businesswoman of the year. So this is uh, the, her achievement in her, in her journey for last so many years. So welcome, uh, Dr. Bhora. I hope that you will add a lot of values in our panel discussions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, what I do, I will uh, ask you, I will ask uh, Francesca that uh, your take, you know, in maybe two, two to three minutes, 
in in short take so far as our uh, you know topic is concerned our today's discussion topic is concerned if you can say something in general then we will go for a you know question answer session over to francesca yes um, about this uh, the topic of this uh, discussion uh, it's very interesting because i think uh, uh, maybe the indian government is uh, looking uh, is tilted toward uh, an economic recovery uh, also after this uh, covid period uh, you know to uh, also to exports Uh, regarding the foreign trade, yeah, there is uh, the government has proposed this uh, foreign trade policy um, for five uh, for um, you know five years uh, with a lot uh, a number of steps uh, to empower the, the, the these structures of um, SMS. It is a, a, a very important uh, part of the Indian economy. Uh, very similar to Italy as well. Okay. One of the point is uh, of the empowerment of the SMS uh, is about uh, strengthen, strengthen also the B2B e-commerce and B2C e-commerce experts. So uh, this new thing uh, um, must be uh, enhanced uh, Uh, and is needed uh, uh, to create a knowledge infrastructure to uh, optimi optim optimize the use of e-commerce to bring in growth uh, uh, to export exports. So this is, I think, a general um, first uh, opening uh, that, I, yeah, that I thought it was uh, quite important. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much, Francesca. Uh, you know, giving us a very good and brief, uh, you know, opening and quite, uh, uh, you know, informative. We can discuss upon all those things. We can elaborate in in the next, uh, you know, forty minutes, next thirty forty minutes. Now I'm coming to uh, Purnima. Now, what is your take? You know, if you can uh, give us some, uh, you know, short, uh, you know, understanding of this uh, topic. First of all, namaste to everyone. Good evening to everyone in India, and good morning to everyone in United States. I would like to first thank you, uh, Jayant, as well as Horasis India 2021 team for this August gathering uh, for two days. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be in front of you guys. Uh, from recovery to resurgence, India's Uh, leaders and experts across the sectors must guide countries as the world continues to focus on rebuilding economies. So we have to no longer are we thinking of U.S. being the superpower or India uh, leading the next uh, 21st century in uh, uh, all this. I think the world has become a one family now. So we have to together collectively look at the economies. Recently, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharamanji in India last week had closed door conversation with a lot of big wigs in U.S. The interaction on the uh, advancing in India's sustainability and uh, also inclusive growth. But as they do that, uh, as a destination for U.S., India being the number one destination. Uh, and we'll talk more about why India and so forth uh, in the next 45 minutes. But uh, the, the progress and reforms made in the union budget is going to play a big role. And I'm sure, Jayant, you know more than I do sitting there right there in India on a daily basis. But India is an attractive destination. Uh, financial services, digital economy, life sciences, defense, supply chain, uh, logistics, Uh, export promotion is also uh, very much uh, looked into in India right now for the entire country. Uh, all this export promotion is going to allow foreign exchange inflow. So it's very important to India and I'll rest my case here. Thank you. Thank you, Purnima. As a very fantastic opening remarks, very insightful opening remarks. We will uh, deliver it in details in the, in the next half an hour time. Now, I would like to come back to Francesca. Uh, I would like to come back to Francesca with some specific uh, discussion uh, about our topic. 
uh, now as you know francesca that the government is tilted towards you know economic recovery through exports now we are very focused on exports our make in india uh, initiatives is not only says uh, the make for india but also make for the world now this india's india is having there is a new proposed foreign trade policy 21 to 26 right there's a there is a new that that's a proposed foreign policy not yet been uh, finalized but uh, almost this is the finalization stage a number of steps has been uh, you know taken the proposed uh, for uh, boost of the smes and the export sector now my question to you uh, francesca Uh, that you talked about B two C e commerce, a cross border B two C e commerce. Now, can you explain? Can you elaborate this? That how India e uh, export can grow, or how B two C e commerce, cross border B two C e commerce can help India to increase its export? If you can elaborate on this, Francesca. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we can introduce uh, the BLI, this production-linked incentive scheme uh, that was launched last year, and uh, under the self-reliance uh, government's initiative. And of course, uh, uh, this has attracted uh, leading international companies uh, to expand their production uh, units in India. Uh, especially uh, this pli can help uh, india to export electronics and it goods of as i said uh, this move has attracted the leading international companies to expand uh, this production in the country uh, and there are uh, some examples uh, like uh, the tech giant samsung uh, Who decided to move uh, its uh, display manufacturing uh, plant from China to, an, to India, and uh, uh, of course, this move has made under the uh, it was due to the incentive of the Indian government, um, who also approved the fina financial in, in, in incentives. Um, In, in this case, case in particular, to boost domestic, smart, domestic smartphone production. So this is an example of uh, an area where making India is working for export products uh, as well as uh, domestic consumption. Um, and India uh, is. Uh, mm, The second largest uh, smartphone market uh, has a plenty of potential for growth. So the uh, combination of uh, uh, improving the local production uh, for internal consumers and also for export is a, a very, uh, you know, um, successful uh, uh, combination. Uh, so there are others uh, uh, companies that has um, um, exploited these uh, occasions, uh, and it's like also Apple that has started uh, um, manufacturing uh, uh, iPhones uh, in India to local units of uh, Foxconn Technology Group uh, that is uh, from Taiwan. And uh, they have uh, invested, uh, uh, you know, maybe around nine million US dollars. Uh, in uh, there is a plan to invest this in uh, over four years. And then there are there are others. There are also Indian firms uh, that are also expanding uh, their factories and they're encouraged by this uh, PLI scheme. Tesla also. Uh, You know, uh, all these companies are see um, India to have uh, seen India to uh, emerge as the country that is uh, a manufacturing manufacturing hub for the rest of the world. That means also an export hub. So about B 2 C, uh, B 2 yeah, B 2 C is a little bit more. Uh, um, something that has to improve. It has to be improved. Uh, the sell selling online, so the government must facilitate this more, 
simplif simplifying maybe some processes like uh, export uh, uh, regist registrations and other compliances and so on. So, um, of course, uh, uh, new um, uh, the improvement of uh, of this uh, uh, both for startups and uh, both entrepreneurs uh, uh, is to maximize uh, the use of digital platforms to sell the production, you know, so also for export. Okay. So I think uh, this this is more um, a vision, you know, something that is going to be improved. It must be improved more. Uh, the use of B2C platform for export, but it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good, um, it's a vision, it's a needed vision for you. Well, okay. uh, well, well, thank you, uh, thank you, Francesca. Actually, you know, uh, you, you touched upon the PLI, the performance link incentive, what uh, the government of India has launched uh, last year, and uh, there are uh, 13 sectors, right? But my question was little different. My question was that how a B2C e-commerce, I am thinking about that, can we, can an Indian uh, startup or MSME or whoever it is, can we have an Indian Alibaba? Can we have an, you know, Amazon? Can we have an eBay? So what Alibaba is doing, it's a B2C cross-border business, cross-border. They are exporting through e-commerce. But as of now, there is no Indian company you know, exporting uh, uh, stuff uh, uh, through the e-commerce and, and that's why we are still not able to generate, uh, you know, revenue, export revenue through through B2C e-commerce. So we are actually looking at Indian version of Alibaba. So how that can be happened, that's the definitely there are a lot of things needs to be done. So that was the that was that was the question that uh, how we can, uh, you know, tackle that. Anyway, we can we can come back to that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I can. We yes, can come back yeah, to the question. Uh, but uh, yeah. at the same time, you have given a very good perspective of a PLI, performance link incentive. And as you rightly said, that you know the most beneficial, uh, uh, you know, industry in this PLI so far since last one year is your, you know, mobile phones and the ITs. You know, who are manufacturing, uh, you know, millions and millions of sets and you know export uh, out of India. So India soon becoming. Uh, the you know export hard of all, all these mobile phones, right? But there are other sectors also that we will discuss you know later on. Now I come to uh, Purnima. Uh, Purnima, uh, that uh, you know you are uh, very much active uh, so far as uh, India, US at the government level, uh, uh, in the business level, you in touch with uh, you know you traveled India with. Uh, Donald Trump when he was uh, the president of India in the last uh, tour. So you had a lot of interaction with a lot of uh, you know, top ministers. So you're having a very fair idea of what India's policies are, what they are going to do, what, what is their uh, intention actually, what, what is the long term plan. Now, from that perspective, uh, can you please tell us that, uh, see, what is India? India tries to be a global economy. As we said that India's plan is to the 5 trillion, trillion economy by 2025. Now, can you see that various kinds of challenges and opportunities this of this India's this enhanced participation in global economy? Unless until you participate in the global economy, you cannot be a 5 trillion uh, dollar economy, right? So I just want to understand from you that what are the opportunities and challenges what India needs to address? See, Jayant, uh, with challenges come, comes opportunities. I strongly believe that. And India's enhanced uh, participation in global economy is very visible to everyone. You have seen Prime Minister Modi go to all the meetings worldwide and create a, such a hype for India that every prime minister and president of a country wants to come to India and sign MOUs with India. So India is in a very good shape right now. But internally, a lot is going on. There are challenges, and I think Prime Minister Modi is doing a fantastic job uh, bringing new incentives, but implementation and execution of his vision ha is a little bit slow. And I'll be very honest about that because this is a platform we are trying to discuss to run the world, and we can only run the world if we are honest with each other. 
uh, although India is a, a extremely lucrative destination, there are challenges that the other countries see. As you know, I'll give you an example of Harley Davidson. When President Trump and uh, Prime Minister Modi had a conversation, uh, when India is exporting to United States, it's zero tariff. But when United States is exporting Harley Davidson, it's 100% tariff. So that's the conversation they had. And Prime Minister Modi said to him that we'll take off 50% of those tariffs. And later he said, we'll take off 70%. And President Trump replied to him, uh -huh, not good enough you know, because we are talking about zero tariff and we are talking about 100% trade. So no matter what you do, it's not a fair play field. With that being said, I would still say that India is becoming a key player in the global economy, partly reflecting the reduction of tariffs since early 1990s and relatively low non-tariff barriers. It performs extremely well in the exporting of information, technology services, pharmaceutical and petroleum products. India's largest diaspora is well integrated abroad. As you already know, we are a, a huge uh, a segment of this uh, of this country. Uh, in, in numbers, uh, we are now challenging elections. And, and I'm so happy to say that uh, in this new cabinet, there are many, many Indians that have been holding really big positions. So Indians have made their mark. It's it's time for India to cash in on that. Uh, it's one thing to appreciate the diaspora, but I think India needs to create a platform where they can truly take advantage of the diaspora worldwide because we are really uh, in, a, in good shape. We are top 5% in the United States where it comes to investment, where it comes to savings and so forth. And that's the reason we have a say so in the elections of United States now. So I will rest there and let you continue this theme of uh, discussing more. And I'm sure uh, we will talk about India could perform better in some domains. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Purnima. Nicely uh, elaborated uh, about uh, what are the opportunities and challenges uh, you know, uh, in front of India to become a global uh, five trillion economy or a global economy. Now, as you rightly said that the, the reform process is slow, uh, that we also understand slow. But at the same time, uh, the one of the major problem, I am I will not say the problem. So this can happen because we are the largest democracy in the world. And you understand in a democracy, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking a decision or uh, is is easy, but implementing there could be a lot of challenges because yes. you cannot, uh, you know, uh, implement something uh, whatever you want to because there are, as I said, there are democracy. You have to take everybody along with you, and uh, sure. that is why it takes some time, and that is why you know at times because of that, uh, India may lose a lot of good opportunity. No doubt about that. But uh, we are we are uh, dedicated to democracy. So uh, that is the uh, you know whatever you say that's the plus point minus point. So far as your industry is concerned, we have to take it like that. When we have to take you know cognizance of that, you know. And, and as you, you know, rightly said, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. I yeah. wanted to just throw in that uh, patience is a virtue when doing business with India. Correct. You are absolutely correct. Patience is a virtue. It's a slow and steady growth. You will you will get your growth, but it has to be a slow and steady. This is the kind of a thing, right? And as you say, that it is very important is this Indian diaspora, because because of that, you know, we we are looking for a support from Indian diaspora. What they are giving, obviously, they are wholeheartedly giving the support. So it should continue. Maybe it should further, uh, you know, attain the greater high, so that you know, uh, you know, that can be because that is very important uh, for India to take part in global economy. Because Indians are spread across across the world, right? So, so that is important point. Thank you so much for uh, elaborating this, you know, or uh, uh, you know, this point. Again, I'll be back to uh, Francesca. Uh, Francesca, uh, you know, uh, you must be aware that in the recent past, during this COVID nineteen situation, whether it is a during COVID or post COVID, you know, uh, there is a, a famous concept has come in. It's called China plus one sourcing strategy lot of people are talking about China plus one sourcing strategy. So I'll tell you China plus one means, 
you know earlier days you know most of the people a uh, source product whether it is a finished product whether it is an intermediary whether it is a raw material mainly 100% uh, at times from china now during this uh, uh, this pandemic during this disruption now everybody uh, has understood that it is dangerous to uh, depends on one single source whether it is china or xyz is nothing to do with china if it is in india also it's the same thing that you cannot depend on one single source you have to have a multiple channel to to give you the support that is why the 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 term is uh, came but at the same time nobody can avoid china because they are having a fantastic infrastructure you know uh, you know built across built over the years so it cannot be you know replicate you know just overnight or you know over one year or two years so that is why they say it's china plus one this china is there at the same time i will have to, i will go to some other country so that's why china plus one so uh, francesca i just like to uh, you know uh, ask you that do you have any idea that in this kind of a situation what are the countries in asian countries other than china you know uh, you know who are who are going to benefited for this uh, you know uh, this approach of china plus one uh, sourcing strategies who are the countries uh, do you have any idea who are the countries uh, from where the as you rightly said samsung is sourcing from india there are other companies they have gone to other countries as well so who are the most beneficial because of this china plus one sourcing strategy yeah this was the topic of alexander more than mine so you know i'm i i don't have uh, many elements about other countries uh, I know, of course, about Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, the manufacturing sector in Vietnam has uh, more than doubled um, during the same period. Uh, if we compare him it to India, in the same period from twenty uh, two thousand six to two thousand maybe twelve. But it was this was before you know China put swan. So let's say um, there are some uh, you know I don't I I, I just uh, can uh, talk about Vietnam because I remember these uh, data. Uh, I cannot uh, go in and the deep about other countries. It was the topic of Alexander maybe China put swan. So if we if we go to our previous um, you know topic about uh, uh, the P PLI uh, incentive you know scheme, of course this uh, is going to attract a lot of production uh, from China as well. Um, so I think. Uh, why B two B two B has to be improved then? B two C. You still ask why we don't we don't we India don't have this Ali, in Alibaba. First of all, to export uh, in general and uh, in, in a traditional way or in a B two B two C way, you have to be to produce. You have to you have to have to an established uh, production of uh, you know of uh, products that are. Uh, um, that can match uh, Asian standards, standards or European standards or USA standards, and so on. So, of course, the global manufacturers um, they have to work, of course, uh, to uh, uh, keep up uh, to demand from Indian uh, consumers. But also growing opportunities for exports, and for to do, for doing this, they must uh, um, you know follow also the the matching uh, with the standards of other countries. I don't know. Maybe this is one topic uh, that uh, I think it it needs to be uh, more explored, and and more. And then there is the the supply chain, the logistics, all the all. All those things that are essentials uh, uh, for uh, the B two the B two C experience. Um, so uh, I don't know. As uh, the previous uh, colleagues uh, has said, uh, she already said that uh, um, there are many. All these things are on the 
paper and some of them are going a little bit slow, but uh, there, is all, there are all the intention to improve those. Uh, of course, uh, to send online, uh, uh, the SMS uh, must be uh, encouraged, encouraged to sell online uh, also and uh, maybe uh, and to do that and to, do, to use this uh, for exports uh, uh, the government must uh, uh, facilitate uh, and simplify as I said uh, uh, some processes and uh, and so on. So I see there is uh, maybe to, to your previous Previous question can uh, Alexander can answer. Uh, <laughs> correct, correct. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Francesca. You know, you know, you were right when you said you were right. Uh, what you know, the PLI is one of the major growth driver so far as Indian export is concerned. So now I welcome Alexander, Alexander Malakat. You know, uh, though you were late, but still we are having 15 minutes time with us. Uh, so welcome, Alexander. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Francesca. Uh, now we are having Dr. Purnima Voria who has joined us from U.S. Uh, Purnima uh, is uh, Dr. Alexander Malakat, uh, you know, based in Toronto, London, uh, sorry, Toronto, Canada. And he's he dons a lot of hats, you know, he's, uh, you know, the founding uh, member of Opus Advisory. He also ran a boutique consulting firm in London and he's managing director of, uh, he's, you know, he's a managing director of ESG, uh, what you said that, you know, I will tell you, uh, he is the managing director of um, ESG validation LLP again in London. Right? So anyway, I will not uh, take more time in introducing him. I will come to uh, Alexander straight away uh, that uh, we were discussing about that, uh, you know, uh, China plus one strategy. So uh, I know that you have been doing, you know, you are uh, expert in international trade and all this. So if you can throw some light on China plus one strategy. You know, why I'm saying that, you know, uh, though people say that this is a recent phenomenon, means uh, during COVID or uh, post-COVID, if you ask me, I don't think so. Because uh, China, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, trying to find an alternate uh, uh, vendor, uh, you know, it started a few years back. I may be wrong, a few years back, because the cost, the labor cost and all these things is China is going up steadily for the last so many years. So definitely there is a, you know, the steam gets, uh, you know, the, the pace uh, is uh, now much more during this uh, pandemic. So uh, what is the strategy and who are the uh, countries who are most beneficial uh, for this kind of a sourcing strategy? You know, other than India, who are the other countries? Yeah. Right. Please Thank answer. you so much. And I sincerely apologize to my fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, you as well. I, I woke up to find that my internet was down and it only just came up. I thought I would join for at least a few minutes. So my sincere apologies for that. Um, so look, I, I agree with you. China plus one is new language that we're using in the context of the COVID crisis. But you're right. The, the changes in supply chain configuration are not new. Uh, there's been there's a lot of talk about the next 11. I think Goldman Sachs coined that term a few years ago in terms of demonstrating which economies were next to rise from a, from a development and economic and trade perspective. And there was a lot of attention placed on Indonesia, Vietnam, and some of the other South Asian economies uh, that were, uh, or Southeast Asian economies that were going to at least uh, complement some of the sourcing that was going on in China. So I, I agree with you 100% that it's not completely new. I think, if anything, it's been amplified um, in the current, uh, context of the COVID crisis. If you think about pharmaceuticals, if you think about some other goods that are considered to be strategically important, there's an in increasing sensitivity about having concentration risk, not only in terms of country sourcing, but also in terms of supplier sourcing. So, you know, it's, it's, it's two levels. It's the country level, and it's also the supplier network in global ecosystems, in global trade trading ecosystems. One of the things that's interesting, and then I'll stop because I don't really want to interrupt your flow, is that years ago, one of the broadcasters did an interesting thought exercise to say, you know, if China and India could figure out how to work jointly in certain areas, and I think the auto sector was illustrated as one where there was a lot of potential, there would be tremendous economic value generated from that. And so we, if we put the geopolitics aside a, a moment, the pure commercial potential was something that was highlighted as actually being very competitive, even to the... You know, that, that, oh, that was oh, an interesting discussion from some years back. And then the final point I'd make about India 
is that it has it was for a very long time the absolute case study on how to develop export capabilities in high value uh, in high value aspects of value chain. I mean, the service sector, India almost wrote the textbook on how to develop a service sector economy and have it export ready and export capable. So I think there's tremendous potential there. And the final thing I'll say is that one of the areas where we work that not many countries and, and businesses have figured out is the importance of financing in export and financing international trade. And India has tremendous expertise and has given that a very strategic uh, profile as well in its in its discussion and its politics or policies. I should say. Well, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Alexander, giving us a beautiful perspective of this China Plus One strategy. I can only tell you one thing. You know, uh, we say there is a new uh, you know word coming in. It's called a Mighty Five. You know, M I T I Five. You know, what does it mean? Mighty means M is uh, I think Malaysia. I is India. T is Thailand. I is again Indonesia, and this Roman five is Vietnam, right? So that's it is a it is a mighty five kind of a thing as of now. So you know, thank you so much for this. You know, I will uh, uh, go back to Purnima once again. Now uh, we discussed about that. Uh, you know, initially a uh, few questions we have uh, put uh, you know uh, in, you know in front of uh, the thing. So one of these things that our geopolitics, our geopolitics, looking for a buttress system against. The other nation. It is a it is a very interesting question. If you can throw some light on that, sure. Um, uh, for that, uh, one thing I have to say on the China plus one, uh, because it's so tempting not to say anything. Uh, it is the business strategy of China of China, so that people uh, invest only in China and diversify business into other countries. Uh, I don't think China wants to see that, but. That is a lucrative opportunity for India uh, because the United States has so much issues with China and so does other countries. I think this monopoly is not going to stay for too long because Good. other countries have cheaper labor than China does. So as you mentioned, the four, four or five countries, that's perfect the example of uh, you know breaking that mono uh, monopoly. I would also say uh, with the same token that India has an opportunity, of course, along with challenges, but India has a big opportunity to do the manufacturing, to take over this uh, role of supply chains and everything, because India can be a hub for all over Asia from distribution point of view. And I'm just talking about Asia because we, are, we have ne nearby countries. But it can be for the rest of the world too. India has cheap labor. India can make quality products. India is not going to now just talk, think about cheap products that don't last because they really are competing with China at this point. And they can succeed in this quest of uh, going and doing business with global economy. So uh, there are many countries coming in the play field. It's not just India, as you just mentioned. And I think so China will have to relook into their strategy and, uh, and uh, think twice before they uh, monopolize everything that is around them. It's not going to work anymore because this is a global economy. COVID also has been a boon because that has brought a lot of opportunities that were not there, just like we are doing uh, virtual conferences, virtual webinars, uh, all of these things, which is bringing people together from all over the world. And I think India is very generous to the world for giving COVID uh, vaccines away. That really helped India set a stage of what India can be as a business relationship, as a country to trust and to do business with, and uh, the generosity of India is going to go a long way. With that being said, India, as I said before, can do uh, do perform better in many other uh, domains. And these include labor intensive manufacturing exports where India has a clear competitive advantage in foreign direct investment. Better performances in these areas would boost creation and thus make growth more inclusive. So it would require improving further infrastructure on India's part, in particular transport, energy provision, modernizing a lot of things. So India will have to make a lot of infrastructure changes. And uh, and also, uh, I would request the prime minister through the medium of your uh, moderating this panel 
that the Prime Minister uh, has to take a good look on creating a platform of Indian diaspora worldwide. And I think Niti Aayog should get involved in it. Invest India probably can get involved in it. But I think at the ministerial level, every uh, portfolio that the minister is having, they really need to look into this very seriously and, uh, and make sure that they create a platform for Indian diaspora to engage with India from trade opportunities to investments, bringing investments, foreign direct investments into the country. Uh, it's a serious thing. And if they do that, India will indeed, I am very sure, be a $5 trillion economy by 2025, if not earlier. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Purnima. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, our uh, new guest. Uh, I don't know uh, about you, gentlemen, if you can introduce yourself quickly, because we don't have much time. We have just three minutes time left. Hi, my name is Paul Sinar, and I'm uh, chairman of a company called CloudGaze. And we, we have a, a good footprint in India with our development team as well, along with some okay. of our founders. That's that's you know that's great. Welcome welcome in our panel. Though you know we have not much time uh, to do this. Anyway, I will be again asking back to Alexander uh, to touch upon a very important uh, topic. Uh, you know that is you know the the reconfiguration of global supply chain. So since you are in this particular field worldwide, you are doing a lot of jobs. You are one of the one of the you know master of this you know globally. So can you quickly, uh, you know, put some thoughts on that, that how global supply chain has reconfigured and where India stands on this? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there is some reconfiguration, probably not as much as some will claim, because there are commercial realities and economic realities at work. One of my colleagues said recently, it's not very easy to relocate a billion dollar semiconductor plant just because you want to. So, you know, there's some degree of that. I think we'll see it in the strategic sectors in pharma and PPE and agri food, for example, uh, but probably not as broadly as some will claim. Uh, for partially political reasons. So I, I think that's the reality we're looking at now. Um, the chief economist of the WTO, Bob Koopman, whom we spoke with recently, talks about re-globalization and not deglobalization. Um, and I think India is very well positioned. India is, is a federation, is a, is a parliamentary system like Canada is. So I fully appreciate to a smaller degree the complexities of, of running a, a country with diversified power and authority and jurisdiction. So that, that's, that's a com complex issue. But I completely agree with the diaspora being one of the under-leveraged assets of the nation. And I think that that's definitely an action worth, uh, worth thinking about in terms of responding to the, the reconfiguration of supply chains and how the diaspora and, and the Indian policy can respond to those sorts of things. So I think there's some real opportunity there as well. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you so much. We don't have much time. I will, I will come to, uh, you know, Francesca for your 10 seconds, you know, the closing remarks very quickly, the takeaway, maybe one sentence, two sentence quickly. Francesca, your takeaways. Yeah, so uh, related to what I have uh, <coughs> touched in the previous uh, speech, uh, I must say that uh, India uh, can encourage and build uh, an appropriate legal and uh, regulatory system to drive growth through the e-commerce uh, exports. So, making India can truly be sustained by the government through encouraging the role of digital markets. Or, in general, if the government can concentrate its investments in key industries uh, to increase productivity implement um, targeted financial uh, reforms um, and find a way to ensure high enough wages, India can become a highly competitive manufacturing hub and a supplier of choice. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Purnima, your, your takeaways quickly. Uh, India has seized many opportunities and exposure to trade and increase in, has increased India's gained market shares. So I am very optimistic on India, but India must focus on MSMEs and India must also uh, think about collaborating with US businesses, uh, the minority business enterprises, so that uh, we can put 1 million of the MBEs with India's MSMEs because growth is going to be driven 
uh, uh, by the backbone of the economy, which is the small, micro, small, medium sized enterprises. Uh, large corporations will continue to seize many, many opportunities. The, all the trade barriers, all the trade facilitations, all the uh, export uh, exposure uh, to trade, uh, export and import uh, the, uh, are going to be a big chunk of the share of the GDP. And so I think India is on the right track, but the right infrastructure to make all this happen and the, and the timely execution is going to take India uh, a lot further. I'm very optimistic yeah. in India and I'm looking forward to doing much more with India. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you Thank so you much so because much. we need your help as well. Now, the the last but not the least, Alexander, your takeaway is very quickly because we have already, you know, our session is over. However, mm -hmm. we can, yeah. Indeed. Thank you. So, so my takeaway would be to say that I hope that India doesn't turn inward. There was some indication of policy of turning inward. I think that there's tremendous potential in looking at trade very holistically in terms of import, export, and FDI activities being very closely linked. And from my perspective, two major drivers will help with the global COVID recovery. One is re-engaging the SMEs, as our colleague said, and the other is engaging in a rules-based fair multilateral trade. And I think India is very, very well positioned to uh, to have a very good story in all of those areas. So I think that's the uh, the very upbeat takeaway in terms of uh, what India can do to respond to the current circumstances. Great, great, Alexander. So, you know, at the end of the thing, what we understand that India in all perspective is poised to grow, but at the same time, we have to take a lot of initiatives. Whatever we have taken, we have taken good initiatives, but yet to take a lot of new initiatives needs to be taken to take India into the next level, into the 5 trillion economy by 2025. As all of you said that we need speed. We need speed to the speed for execution. So that needs to be there. And all infrastructure, all other potential, whether it is man, machine, material, all are there with India. So we hope that India takes the right step, like you know before what they have taken in the past, that should continue along with the speed. So thank <clears> you so much, all my panelists, for your beautiful, and very valuable inputs. We will uh, convey this to the you know the right uh, agencies in India so that uh, Indian government and other other uh, you know relevant people take the note of it and work on it. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you, and thank you once again for participating uh, you know in this uh, you know you know session. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.